Exercise 1 is comparing melting point for these three metals, sodium, magnesium, aluminum. We have talked about it earlier involving valency, right? Metallic bond strength linked to valency. And this is across the period. When the metals have different valency, or if they can delocalize to give me a different number of electrons, then the melting point or the metallic bond strength will be affected by it. In general, melting point, melting point for metals, of course, is related to the strength of my metallic bond, which is linked to the valency, how many electrons you can lose. So if your valency increases, you can delocalize more electrons and you form a more positively charged cation and you attract a bigger sea of delocalized electrons. So the metallic bond becomes stronger. We have this here, across period three, valency goes up. So charge of the metal cation is greater. I have a bigger sea of delocalized electrons. So the metallic bond is stronger. More energy required to overcome, the melting point is higher. I think uh, we do need to know that when I'm comparing melting point of metals across the period. Now, how about down the group? I think it is also interesting because if I go down the group, we notice that they have the same valency, correct? Magnesium, calcium, barium, etc. All of them are group 2 metals and they can only give me two valence electrons. So, does it mean that if down the group, the valency is exactly the same. So does it mean that they have the exact same boiling point? Apparently not. So we want to understand that if it is down the group, then how do I compare metallic bond strength? Now, metallic bond strength is also related to this idea, charge density. Charge density actually is a very important property of very important value for metal cations. And we actually makes, makes use of this charge density of metal cations to do explanations involving many properties or many outcomes involving uh, metal cations. Along the way, we will talk about it. Nah? Uh, but charge density, basically, it is just the charge of your metal divided by the radius of the metal. So it, it tells me how intense this charge is. If I have a very high charge density, it means that I have a very high charge in a very small region. So the charge is very, very intense. So if the charge is very intense, then the ability for this uh, metal cation with a very high charge density, it will have a greater ability to go and attract a neighboring electron cloud or attract a neighboring anion or negative species. Conversely, uh, if my charge density is low, I have a very low charge, and the radius is high, and then this low charge is spread out over a very big area, so the charge is not so intense. And because it is dispersed over a big area, the charge is not so intense, then the ability of this cation with a low charge density to go and disturb or attract the electron cloud of a neighboring species or to attract negative charges, the ability of it will not be so high if it has a low charge density. Okay? Uh, but do keep this term in mind, charge density, because along the way we will uh, make use of this pretty often. Not only in camp bonding, uh, in syllabus. So if I consider down the group, obviously you have more principal quantum shell, the size will increase, charge density will decrease because the denominator is bigger, right? So if the charge density, if the charge density decreases, the ability for this metal cation to go and attract your C of delocalized electrons will weaken. So weaker attraction between your cations and your delocalized electrons, metallic bond will be weaker, the melting point will drop. So I think this is also interesting to keep in mind. Metallic bond strength is related to valency, it's also related to charge density, if I compare down the 